My name is Sabrina Mully. I am 34 years old. I was born in New York City in the Bronx and I was raised on Long Island. I am Indo-Caribbean. My parents are from Guyana and I am a practicing Hindu woman living in DC right now. I work as a multi-platform editor for the Washington Post. Uh, hi, my name is Asta Tripathi. Um, I'm from the Bay Area. I grew up here. Um, and I also went to San Francisco State. I'm still studying here. I'm in my last year studying child adolescent development. Peace. Hi, um, I'm Nimai. I'm 18. I'm a uh, freshman at Franklin and Marshall. Uh, I live in Philadelphia and uh, I, I'm, I'm Hindu. Hi, uh, my name is Mina and I uh, was born in Chicago, but I was basically raised in Dallas, Texas. And I currently am a sophomore at Brown University studying science, technology, and society with a science focus on planetary and astronomy science. So my name is Sham Allard and I grew up in Alachua, Florida, which is about 20 minutes north of Gainesville, Florida. Um, and Gainesville is where I attended college, um, the University of Florida, uh, where I studied journalism. And uh, since graduating, I started working at HAF as its content writer. You know, as a teenager, you be, you're very insecure, you're very hypersensitive to your peers and what they think of you. And growing up in ISKCON, just to explain, ISKCON, known as the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, or better known as the Hare Krishnas, um, it's a sect of Gaudiya Vaishnavism that teaches uh, bhakti yoga, or the yoga of devotion, love, and service. And, you know, when you join the ashram at that age, what my, my parents joined in the 80s, they were pioneering devotees. And when you join at that time, when you're not, they had no Indian connection. So when they joined, they fully immersed themselves in the experience. And they, my dad shaved his head. He started wearing a dhoti, started wearing a kurta, which obviously is very exotic in the West. And when you see someone with a shaved head wearing a dhoti and a kurta, dancing around, singing on the streets, um, it's, it's almost a comical scene, especially to someone who doesn't understand what's happening. Um, so whenever I was hanging out with friends from high school, we might walk walk by one of them and I would I would never acknowledge that I, would, I had anything to do with it because they would commonly make comments that of how ridiculous it was and how it didn't make any sense and the challenge for me obviously was I was very I was very insecure and I would also get angry feel anger at them because they were expressing uh, what I thought was a lot of hate and dislike towards this thing that was so integral to who I was. Sure, so when I grew up in the Bronx, I grew up in a pretty Hispanic neighborhood. So there weren't a lot of Indian people, there weren't a lot of Guyanese people, just not really brown people. So that was a really isolating experience. And not only that, I went to Catholic school. So I remember just not being able to fit in because number one, it wasn't my religion. Number two, nobody else looked like me. Nobody else had the same food as me. Nobody else, you know, identify the way I do, did. So that was really isolating. And it continued until I finished high school on Long Island because I grew up in a predominantly Jewish white community. And I'll still remember um, this one experience that I had when I was in sixth grade, it was sixth grade English. This boy asked me, what kind of Indian are you? Are you the feather or the dot? And then he made these like sounds, like, you know, doing that thing that native First Nations people do. Um, and just, it just, I always felt so defensive. Like I always felt extra defensive when I was in school. This one boy asked me, why are you wearing a stupid 30 on your neck? Like it, you know how Om has the little symbol and looks like a 30. And I was so just, he had like a Star of David and I like said something offensive back to him just because I felt so, you know, defensive. Um, but I felt like at a young age, I really did things to prove my my Hinduness, my brownness, my Indianness. So I remember the first week of eighth grade, I wore bindis to match every single one of my outfits. Um, I remember having this pink polo and I wore a bright pink bindi with like crystals on it. And I just wanted to prove to people that I was proud of who I was, even if I didn't always feel that way, even if I felt kind of isolated, 
because the girls are having their bat mitzvahs and doing all that and I didn't have anything like that so I felt so othered but in the same regard I wanted to prove that I was proud of who I was um and by doing that I think it's given me this strong uh foundation to be able to um be proud of being a Hindu woman um, I was taking a class, it was a seminar, a freshman seminar, and um, it was called Land and Conflict. And we studied a lot of different territorial disputes and we would just basically conversate around the topic. And we had a lot of, it was a very diverse class. So almost all case studies that we went over, there was someone with a very personal experience with it. So there was one week that we did, we went over Kashmir and this was following right after, like a few months after the removal of Article 370. And I, being from Kashmir, was um, very passionate about it. And I also had a friend in that class, he was from Pakistan, who was also very passionate about it. Um, and so when we had had that week, when we talked about, when we had that week about it, I didn't necessarily want to say much because we had just gotten into an argument like the week before and like trying to have a constructive conversation wasn't able to happen between us. So that week I hadn't really said much. And, um, but after class, Someone had come up to me, I'm not, it wasn't necessarily a friend, but someone had come up to me and said that multiple people in the class had just, were talking about how I was just like gonna be a raging Kashmiri pundit because like they knew that my last name was pundit. And I think some of the readings we had gone over, it said like pundit, Kashmiri pundits. And so they were like, she's just a raging Kashmiri, like she's just gonna go off. And I remember in that class, people just staring at me, like whenever we'd be talking about Kashmir and I was, very quiet person in that class also so I was just kind of like why are people staring at me and I was like maybe I'm paranoid but then this guy told me that and I was like I hadn't even said anything. A lot of my Hindu phobic experiences have to do with what we were taught in our academia and people's reaction to it so a lot of my classmates of what they've learned in schools and they've come to me like oh you guys are like that and I'm like <laughs> and I try to speak up and try to come to like you know a middle ground or how can we discuss about this but it's very difficult when there's always a narrative that's said about you, that you're like this or you're like that. And it was always the teacher is right, the curriculum is right, and we were always shot down. Even when we were trying to bring it into other conversations with our friends, it was like, that's not what the teacher said. Uh, what are you talking about? And I actually remember once, the first time we brought cast into our conversations, um, I was the first time I also heard of it. And I remember the person sitting right next to me was like, oh, so you guys treat people like that? And I was like, I, me, maybe, but I was like, I've never heard of it. I don't know what you're talking about. And I remember just kind of being really off guard and being very uncomfortable the entire time we were learning about Hinduism. Uh, for me, it started in second grade um, where I had a, a couple kids from my elementary school class who, who held me down and tried to make me read a segment of the Bible, um, I guess in a way to try to convert me or or save me from eternal damnation in some way. Um, but but once I got to sixth and ninth grade, that was the, the Hindu phobia experience was was actually ingrained in the actual school system and it wasn't just my my miseducated peers. Um, in in sixth grade I I had to help and sort of become a, a a mini substitute teacher for the Hinduism unit and really chime in and, and kind of correct my teacher in a lot of ways. Um, because our, our textbook was really centered in on caste, cows, karma, and a lot of the social issues of India instead of the actual, the actual importance and the, the, the teachings of Hinduism versus the, um, the section on uh, Islam and the section on Christianity where it was entirely about uh, the teachings. Um, but luckily, once I got to ninth grade, um, my teacher had already been referred to HS materials from a student the year before. So she was really able to, um, to give a, a more accurate teaching of Hinduism. And um, she was also open to me uh, chiming in during class and, and helping, helping teach as, um, as someone with experience. Hinduism for me has always meant to be as accepting and as open as possible to all the experiences and all the beliefs that other people have. And so in second grade, I was, I was lucky enough where I had a strong support system at home where I was able to come home and, and talk out my issues with my parents. And, and they really helped me see that my, my, classmates, my classmates were more confused than anything. They didn't, 
they weren't doing it out of a specific hate for me. It, they were actually trying to do it out of out of goodness for me, I guess. In their in their own view, they saw it as they were they were benefiting me and helping me out. Um, and so um, that that part of Hinduism and um, and the the not the secularism, but the I, I can't think of the word, but just the openness of Hinduism uh, that certainly helped. Um, and then once I got into uh, middle school and elementary school, um, it was it, it just really it really helped in um, in taking the misunderstanding in check and just kind of taking it and going and not not getting too stuck in what people were saying. As you go deeper into the philosophy, you start to realize that like the the root of so much ignorance is that we we all just don't know who we are. And according to Hindu texts, we're, we aren't the body, but we're the soul. And everyone is, everyone is connected to the divine, ultimately. We're all spiritual beings. So if we're all spiritual beings, all these things that divide us, like our name, our family, society, all these different titles that divide us and make us fight with each other, are actually, uh, there's actually something far more powerful that's connecting us when you get through all that BS. And uh, when I was able to appeal to someone as if they're my, in my spiritual family rather than if they were just part of someone else's family or some other country, um, I realized that I could connect to them on a much more powerful level. And uh, when you're able to do that, then communication becomes much easier, much better. And uh, you just start to understand each other on a much in a much better way. So Hinduism to me, when you look at actual scriptures, my I grew up in a pretty religious household, and to me Hinduism is a very female-centered, female-powerful religion. Um, obviously cultural and being from the Caribbean, there's a lot of misogyny and things like that that get intertwined with the religion. But being a Hindu woman following the scriptures, I see it as such a powerful motivator for me to be able to confront not only external challenges, but internal challenges and to be able to um, just believe in myself as a woman, as a um, feminist and a person who advocates for feminist causes. And I think that's how I, um, I see Hinduism as a part of a huge part of my life today. It's just a very feminist, strong, um, moving part of my identity. So luckily I had a lot of, uh, I had a great support system, mostly because my father, he grew up in a very, he grew up in a very Hindu, very strong Hindu uh, background. And because of that, we were able to also grow with a great support system. My own immediate family is great, and if I grow out of that as well, um, I grew up in Shaka, and growing up, I went to Bala Boklam. And because of that, a lot of our friends that we have, we have very similar mindset in terms of where we are able to talk about these things without judging each other. And we're able to, you know, if we even have a difference of opinion, we're able to talk about it, about Hinduism, and bring these into our discussions and bring it and talk about it, how we want to bring it into our American life. And it shouldn't just be a separate entity. I, we need to bring it together. And we are, we're Hindu Americans. It can't be separate. Once I got to to high school, actually, my my history teacher had been referred to HAF already. And so she had already started to include some of the um, the teaching modules, which I think had, had just started coming out around then. She, she'd she already started um, including those in the curriculum and having a, a larger focus on that instead of what was in the textbook. So when I was younger, there there wasn't social media like there is today. So there weren't forums for people to share their Indo-Caribbean experiences. There weren't um, writers or women that I could look up to who were Indo-Caribbean, who were Hindu, who I was able to look up to. So it was a very completely isolating experience being not only a brown girl, a Hindu girl, but also being Indo-Caribbean. I was in this box that was just solely my own box. The Hindu people at school were Punjabi, Gujarati. I was the only Guyanese girl there. So I was, it was really just figuring this out by myself. And as I got older, I started to do more research. I started to talk to older people in my family who are first generation Guyanese. 
and my grandmother specifically um, spoke Hindi, wrote Hindi, Bhojpuri. So I would turn to her to find out about like customs and traditions and um, why we as Hindu people do certain things. And it wasn't until my late 20s, early 30s that I realized that a lot of the things we do um, that just seem everyday commonplace are really Hindu centered um, traditions. So it was an eye-opening experience and um, I honestly do wish there were more resources for me when I was younger, but I'm really happy that now there's outlets and places where women and just young Hindu people can read um, their religion and their culture in the background nowadays. So, so my biggest support I think came directly from my family. Um, they were they've always been you know super proud of their history and their roots, and that's something that I I took a little bit longer to get there. Um, but they were always there and always willing to have that conversation with me. And then my grandparents, being from Kashmir, were also great resources to go straight to them and just have a very open honest conversation not in terms of like any purpose but to just literally just talk more about it and um they were always there for me and always sent me little like weekly readings or like weekly chapters of the vedas that i should focus on and um and then also haf was a huge supporter and for writing that one paper i needed um they were able to give me some very unique sources also primary sources um journalists that i could speak to which was something that i um a lot of other kids couldn't get that in that class so that was super helpful as I said already that it was my parents' generation who pioneered and the movement and they had gone through so much worse than I had. They, my dad had been spit on, my dad had been threatened, my dad had faced violence. Um, so by the time I came around, things not only had things calmed down quite a bit, but he also, they had been through everything. So I could go to them and ask them, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with that? And he almost always had a good answer for me. Um, I think also because our community was the minority, we were also so tight knit that when we got to high school, even though we were objectively, you know, the minority, I think we were one of the bigger groups that were really close together. And I think when you have that kind of love and support and connection with someone, I think that love and that friendship just I think that appeals to someone. It goes past all these, all this other stuff that's going on. And once you become a friend with someone, it's hard. It goes be that. It's hard to just not become a friend with them anymore, just because. Oh, you're Christian and I'm and I'm Hindu. It's like no, we like we like each other. We've had conversations together. That's more powerful than these external titles, especially when you really come down to it.